Testimony of St. John Section 171 Below is a newly revealed account of John the Beloved's testimony of Jesus the Messiah, given through Denver Snuffer Jr. during the month of January 2017. Chapter 1 In the highest council of heaven there was one who spoke out. And the one who spoke out was among the gods, and he was a god. He was in the council of the gods, and the creation of the cosmos was organized through him. And without him does not exist one thing that has come into existence in the cosmos. In him was the power of life, and this power was conveyed into the cosmos as the light in men and everything. The light shone in the chaos, and those in darkness have not been able to grasp it. There was a man sent from God, and his name was John. This man was sent as a witness so that he might testify and identify the light to give everyone a reason to believe through the Messiah. He, John, was not the light, but he was sent by heaven as a witness to testify of the light and to end the dispensation of Moses and baptize to begin a new dispensation. The light enlightens every man who is progressing upward in the cosmos. The messenger of the heavenly council was in the cosmos, and the cosmos existed through him, and the cosmos had not acquired his knowledge. He came into his own creation, but those there were unable to understand him. As many as perceived the light in him, to them he gave knowledge to enable them to follow the path to become like him, begotten children in the family of the Most High God. This is only possible for those who believe through his name. Those who believe through his name are no longer born of blood to follow the appetites of flesh, nor the ambitions of man, but are able to become, like him, the offspring of God. This one who was spokesman from the heavenly council was made flesh, and he temporarily cast his tent among us, and we could see his knowledge of the path to ascend in light and truth. He was a member of the family of God, full of the power to ascend and able to display truth to others. John bore witness of him, and proclaimed, This is he of whom I testified, he who would be born after me has advanced in progression above me. He has advanced in progression far beyond everyone else in this sphere. For in the council of heaven was the spokesman, even God's heir, who was born into the flesh and sent to us to fulfill the will of the Father. And as many as obtain authority in his name shall gain the right to ascend to heaven. We who have witnessed his fullness comprehend what eternal life means through him revealing the pathway of ascension to the throne of God. For the law was given through Moses, but life and truth come through Jesus the Messiah. The law gave carnal instructions, but led only to condemnation and death. The gospel is to empower endless life through Jesus the Messiah, the only begotten Son, who is a manifestation of the love of the Father. No man has seen the Father without hearing him testify of the Son, for only through him is any soul saved. And this was the witness of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to inquire, Who are you? And he did not deny that he possessed the Spirit of God's messenger, but declared, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, How then do you possess the Spirit of God's messenger? And he said, I am not that messenger foretold to come and restore all things. And they asked him, Are you the prophet Moses said God would raise up from among Israel, like unto Moses, in whose mouth God would put his words, and he shall speak all that God commands him? And it will come to pass that whosoever does not hearken to that prophet, God will judge. Do you claim to be that prophet? And he answered, No. Then they asked, Who then are you? We are obligated to convey your answer to them that sent us. What do you say for yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as predicted would be sent by the prophet Isaiah. And the inquirers who were Pharisees asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Messiah? nor come as the messenger to restore all things, nor the prophet foretold by Moses to whom we must give heed. John answered, I baptize with water, but there is one standing among you, whom you do not acknowledge and I bear testimony of him. He is the one foretold by Moses, 
and he will preach following my witness of him. He has progressed beyond me so much that in comparison I am not worthy to kneel before him. His shoes latch yet I am not worthy to unloose, nor am I worthy to wash his feet. I could never substitute for him. He will baptize, not only with water, but also with fire and with the Holy Ghost. The next day John beheld Jesus coming to him, and said to those who were with him, Behold the sacrificial Lamb of God, who will redeem from the fall of the creation. And John testified of him to the others, saying, This is him I described before, saying, After me will come a man who has progressed far beyond me, for he existed before me in heaven. I recognize him, and testify to Israel that he is that prophet foretold by Moses to whom all must give heed. Therefore I am here baptizing with water to prepare people for him. And John recounted, When I baptized him, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven in a sign of a dove, and it abode upon him. I recognized him as God's Son because God, who sent me, and commanded me to baptize to prepare people to hear him, told me, on the man you see the Spirit descend in a sign of a dove and remain with him, he will be the one sent to bestow the Holy Ghost. I saw this happen, and testify that he is the Son of God. The foregoing events happened in Bethabara beyond Jordan, as John baptized there. On the next day after, John stood beside two of his followers, and noticing Jesus as he walked nearby, he said to the two others, Behold the sacrificial Lamb of God. And these two who had followed John, when they heard that testimony, followed after Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and saw them following him, and asked, What do you want? They called him, Rabbi, which means acknowledged teacher, and asked, How can we understand the truth and advance? He replied, All men move upward by gaining light. If you advance, you will learn to be like me. And these two went with him and were taught, and were his companions through that day, for it was mid-afternoon. One of the two who heard the testimony of John and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. That evening he went to his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought Peter to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which is, by interpretation, a seer or a stone. And these men were fishermen, but they immediately left everything else behind to follow Jesus. The day following Jesus went to Galilee and encountered Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was at Bethsaida, the residence also of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the prophet that Moses foretold in the law, and who the prophets promised would come, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael asked him, Can the promised Messiah come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to meet him, and said of him, Behold a pure Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael asked him, How do you know anything about me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were praying under the fig tree, I heard your prayer. Nathanael responded, Rabbi, you must be the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus responded to him, You believe in me because I said to you that I heard your prayer under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, In the name of Father Amon, I promise you, hereafter you shall see the fiery ascent to heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending to visit the Son of Man. On the third day of the week, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his followers were invited guests at the marriage. And when the wedding party wanted more wine, his mother said to him, They have run out of wine. Jesus replied, Mother, why are you talking to me about it? The time for me to provide sacramental wine has not yet arrived. But his mother instructed the servants, Whatever he tells you to do, follow through with it. 
There were six water pots made of stone that were used for ceremonial purification and religious observances, each containing 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus instructed the servants, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said, now remove some and take it to the host. And they took it to him. When the host of the wedding tasted the ceremonial water, it had been converted to wine. But he did not know the source that converted the water, unlike the servants who recognized the source. The host of the feast called for the bridegroom and praised him using a proverb, saying, Careful men introduce their plans using the best wine, and later, when their followers are drunk, then their worst, but you have brought us better wine than at the start. This was a sign confirming his role as the Messiah that was performed by Jesus in Cana of Galilee. It was a demonstration of authority over both the elements and ordinances of salvation. Those who recognized this as a sign of his authority were awed as they considered it was imprisoned among them. After this he went down to Capernaum, he, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they were there a few days. As the Passover arrived, Jesus traveled up to Jerusalem where in the temple there were appointed traders selling oxen, sheep, and doves, and others exchanged coins to profit from the temple donations. Seeing this, Jesus made a whip using small cords, and he drove the profiteers out of the temple, and also their sheep and oxen, and dumped out the exchangers' money, and turned over the tables, and confronted those who were profiteering from Passover, saying, Get your business out of here, and do not degrade my father's house to merely your place of business. It reminded his disciples of the psalm, The zeal of thy house hath eaten me up. The temple authorities, who had authorized the profiteering, confronted Jesus asking, If you think you have a right to exercise authority over the temple, while identifying yourself as God's son, show us a sign to prove you have this right, so we can believe you. Jesus answered and said, I will replace the Holy of Holies in three days with a new holy house of God. The Jews declared, It took forty-six years to build this temple, and will you replace it in three days? But he was talking of the temple of his resurrected body. Later after he was resurrected from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this to the temple authorities, and they remembered the scripture and what Jesus had said to the disciples. Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, many believed on his name when they saw the healing miracles he did. But Jesus did not attempt to have them pledge loyalty to him because he knew they were fickle, and miracles alone cannot produce faith because sign-seekers are wicked and adulterous.